Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, a game that is currently in early access by the folks at Game Labs, and allows you to play through the American Revolution, well right now as the Americans, eventually as the British as well. This is episode number 22, so I'm not going to go through all of the details of what the game is, but we're about to fight a big battle. We're about to fight a battle near Salem. We fought here once before. It was a, uh, a bit of a Pyrrhic draw. Is that a thing? It was a bloodbath. We had 4,000 troops involved in on, on both sides, and the British have not recovered. Their, their units are greatly weakened, about half their strength, what they were before. We are also weaker than we were before, but not quite as much. We've still got you know, a decent sized force and actually outnumber them fairly heavily. So this is going to be a big fight, but it should be one we're able to win and hopefully push back Thomas Gage's army and begin the reduction of the remaining British forces in New England. But we'll see how that plays out. This was taken from our live stream on my Twitch channel from a couple of days ago. So if you are interested in joining those, there's a link in the description. But without further ado, let's jump back in. 10th, 1776. So let's take a look at the field in front of us. I'm guessing the British are going to come for us, right? Or maybe we're on the offensive. I don't know. It looks like we outnumber them up here. So let's do this. Can we form these guys up into individual? Can we join them up? No. All right. Combine them. Okay, your three regiments here, or divisions, or whatever, form up here. These guys can just stay here on the flank, I think. We'll put these guys up in that wood line. Move the artillery up. Supply will stay back. One thing that bothers me about this is elevation doesn't really seem to matter. That should be a huge thing in these games for this kind of a campaign. I'd really like to see them work on that. All right. Enemies over here. Sim, thanks for the raid. Hope you're doing well. How's the simming going? We're about to fight a big battle outside Salem against the British. We outnumber them, but they've got a lot of artillery. Holy crap. One, two, three, four, five, six batteries. And artillery is generally the bane of my existence. I really struggle to counter it. I'm going to pull my resupply units back a little bit because I don't want them to burn through all their supply, replenishing our handful of artillery units. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch these guys into hold formation, which will cause them to drop down on one knee. So they'll have two ranks and it gives them additional cover. Some of them are already in a little bit of cover. I tried to put them in a bit of cover. We'll go ahead and have them switch to hold. The enemy is going to try and flank me. So we will shift some of our troops over this way. Got a nice backing of artillery here behind this wood line that should hopefully help keep the enemy at bay. You can see these initial enemy units did come up in advance, but they're already routing. At least some of them, the skirmishers, didn't didn't survive a volley there. British are trying to move these guys around my flank. But I think this wood line's going to hold them. We'll see. We do outnumber the enemy by about a thousand men, so we should win this fight. But again, they are redcoats. Most of our troops are well armed.
Sim, if you're still around, have you given, um, maybe it's not really your cup of tea, but are you going to give the Mighty A3 Master a look? I know it's very, very rough right now. It's really just a re-release. It's not, I mean, they'll upgrade some textures, but it's not like they're trying to be like, this is a brand new game. It's very clearly like. This is the game that existed before with perhaps a few improvements. Oh, Microprose released the uh, B17, the Mighty A3 Master, but it's not like a new, it's literally the exact same game as the, the, the 23 year old game, same engine and all that. Interior textures of the plane are improved. And then they also have uh, um, like it supports modern operating systems unlike the old game. But other than that, they haven't really changed much yet. I believe on their roadmap, it's in early access. On their roadmap, the intent is to support like larger formations of aircraft. But so far, most of the reviews seem pretty negative of it so far. I don't know if that's because of a divergence in expectations. You know, folks thinking it'd be a new game versus just a re-release or if it's really bad. I heard a lot of the sort of original bugs with the game are still in it. Oh my God. Just saw that like half that line got knocked down by an artillery ball. Yeah, they released it on GOG and also Steam. So there's the the, the old version still there, but then it's called B17 the Mighty Eighth Redux is the is the new version. Oh, I don't want you to move, I just want you to pivot. Right wheel! Front rank, kneel. There's so many enemy guns back here. There's just like a freaking gun line. Like, look at this. Good luck, boys. Maybe I can wait till they're out of ammo and then advance. <laughs> just let both sides hammer each other. We've forced a handful of regiments off the map. I've seen a handful retreat off the map. I think one skirmish company was driven. Driven back. I'm trying to play more patient. And a lot of folks have gotten annoyed with my playstyle in the past, but like, you just keep getting all your men killed. Which is fair. I do. I do that. Uh, why is there friendly fire? Where are you receiving friendly fire from? So just hang back, stay in line. That's okay. These guys are militia. Probably should bring some regulars up to refuse the line over there. Whoa, they're going strong on the left. Loose formation. These guys might have crappy guns. Oh, well, they got they got United States ones. Not too bad. We're gonna try and go up over my flank. We'll reinforce over there. Meanwhile, on the right, these skirmishers are kind of working up in toward our to the rear of our lines. These guys just standing out here taking quite a bit of punishment. Most of my artillery is kind of honing in on this one big division of about 216 men. It was like 240 not that long ago, I think. Of course, we've lost 28 men here. I love the look of the artillery in this game, by the way. When you see those solid shot just ricochet into the ground, I really think that's well done. I just want you to shoot at him. Make ready! Present! Fire! Yeah, drive him back. Drive him back! Are you undisciplined rabble in your loose formation? Go fire a volley into him. 
300 muskets there in the open. They're in nice, neat formations here. Fire! What a ragged, pathetic little volley. I'm very disappointed in you boys. 700 skirmishers trying to get up. Oh, lol. They're coming up toward these 300 or whatever, 200 artillerymen, and then there's like almost 300 soldiers just here kind of like, nope. No, you don't. We got our nice regular units here in compact formation. All right, let's converge on these two regiments in the center. Maybe we do some damage here. I'm not going to advance on the enemy artillery yet. But I might try and drive these guys back from this objective here in the center. Two companies there firing, or two regiments or whatever firing volleys into them there. Three now. They're going to come apart pretty quick, I think. We even got solid shot firing over our head and supporting us. Bit of a crossfire there. All right, boys. I don't want you to get too far up there. Pull back. Buildings are not being garrisoned, as far as I'm aware at this time. If they ever do Napoleonic, that is going to be something they have to do. Certainly was a thing in the revolution, but even more so in the Napoleonic Wars. These enemy green jackets, these skirmishers, they're difficult. I'm not sure how well they melee. Yeah, they got a small little company there that they just shattered. Who all just shattered? It was the same unit. It must be a bug. The same unit shattered five times according to these notifications. But they're gone. These skirmishers are going to be gone before too long. But this gun line here that the enemy's got up here could pose a problem. I have yet to figure out they're breaking just as hard as they can. Once, twice, five times a break in. Let's give me a volley. Yeah. Catch them in three sides. Rout the bastards. Be careful not to be drawn into the enemy guns, which are not that far away. All right. Skirmishers over there getting driven back. Guy on the right has not full cover, apparently. Not enough woods. The center unit here has a little bit more. I would like to see them do more, like, terrain-based cover, like the Civil War game has, where it's like you can lock a unit onto a fixture. They have that in some of the, I think, skirmish battles, where it's kind of like a, a predefined battlefield, not sort of... I assume these are mostly sort of procedurally generated battlefields, but I'd like to see a little more of that. You hold in place, 32 cover, 22, 34. I'm trying to be smart, guys. Oh, what are these guys doing? This, over here, they're just like, hey, let's battle it out. No melee with that. Not with this loose formation, but.
my artillery is running very low on ammo. You can see the red lines down here. But I'm making the enemy come to me so my artillery can be decisive in the defensive, basically. I do have some ammo I can I can replenish some of these guns. So these guys are low on ammo. I'll send one of my resupply wagons up that way. One over here. And then I will leave the third with what ammo it's got to resupply any other emergencies. Kind of surprised the enemy isn't retreating yet. I don't think this will be sort of an annihilation battle. I don't think there's any chance that we'll wipe out Gage's army, but... Fire into their flank! Nice. Don't get too far out there. Stay in the relative safety of some, some cover back here. Um, Alright, our ammo is like getting completely consumed. But these batteries of artillery... All right, they're empty, but most of these batteries of artillery are replenishing pretty decently. So these guys basically got at least half their ammo back. I guess we'll send them over there. And then this gun is going to, this guy's going to go ahead and replace these guns over here. Oh, we've got more ammo over here. I didn't realize we had more, more wagons. We have quite a few additional wagons. So I feel a little bit less less bad about consuming that ammo. Why is this guy retreating? Oh, well, good thing we are choosing to resupply our ammo on these guns over here because they may they may prove necessary to throw back this flank attack. I don't think. 200 men's gonna go very well against three full batteries of artillery, but you never know what they might try. Why not push up and take the positions of the British artillery? Because they will wreck me. This game, artillery is OP at the moment. Attacking enemy artillery, basically the artillery turn into infantry when they abandon their guns. So you're going up against large enemy regiments, and they're like two two salvos of canister will completely wreck a company of your boys. So that's why we're playing it so conservatively. We're just trying to attrit them at this point. They keep coming, we keep routing them. I think that's the way to fight this one right now. And then also, if they do run out of ammo eventually, maybe we can make a play on them. But for the moment, they're not. They don't seem to be terribly low on ammo. They seem to be keeping a, a relatively brisk rate of fire. Look at all of those little shell craters. Actually, maybe their ammo is low. They don't seem to be firing much. If at all. Okay, so they're still shooting some, but... Worth considering. Holding on this flank. These guys are coming on an echelon and not not faring very poor, well. Yeah, eating grape shot is bad for your health. Known risk of lead exposure. All right, I think, I don't know that they've been, I, I, should, I shouldn't say that. Most of their infantry still seems to be on the field. It's been bloodied, but it's still around. We also haven't really shot at their artillery like at all. I don't know if the enemy has any supply wagons though. It was just a salvo of, like, all their batteries. Let's 
Let's do this. Let's get our guns up here in this wood line, and I'm going to see if maybe we can do some... Counter battery fire is not very effective in this game. It's not a terribly effective use of your ammo. But it might be worth a shot. Maybe if the... So here's one thing is, though. If they are low on, on ammo, what we could do is we could come up close to them let them fire off all their guns and then charge in before they have a chance to reload because the way that ammunition typically works in the game is it's not literally they're not out of every single shell it just dramatically slows their reload rate Food on fall, as Napoleon would call it. All right, we're going to have those four batteries all fire in that one enemy gun. We'll see if it accomplishes anything. Probably just wasting ammo would be my guess. All right, this guy's routing from the map. That's the what the white little flag means next to the next to the flag. You guys coming up into the open to do that? The enemy may just start retreating here momentarily too. I don't want to take too much of a risk. Like, I don't want to lose too many troops. But let's do this. Let's try a three regiment charge on these three flank batteries. They just fired a salvo. I think those two batteries. Let's see what happens. Artillery's firing at the enemy artillery to their flank. Oh, that rear battery just routed him. Probably should have fired a volley rather than going straight into melee. The other thing is these guys are too damn good at melees. Like you see how pointless they we inflicted one casualty and they wrecked this company. One casualty. Uh, I know my character can die, so I'm assuming theirs can too. But if their artillery is going to stay and fight to the end, I suppose what we could do is we could try and surround them with our infantry. Like they've only got, they've only got so many batteries. We've got more companies of infantry than they've got batteries of artillery. We just try and give them more targets than they can shoot at. Where is their general again? Gage here. Hey guys, why are you retreating toward their guns? That seems ill-advised. They will route when this red line gets kind of exhausted. Nice if we could take some prisoners, wipe out some companies. The British troops tend to be much better at, at melee than... Yeah, I guess maybe don't fire volley while, you're, while your boys are engaging them in a hand-to-hand in a -hand fist fight. Maybe don't do that. Hey, we wiped that one out.
being charged on all sides. Bad for one's health. I wonder if these guys take less damage from the enemy artillery because they're in loose formation. They're also militia, so who cares about them? Our artillery is doing a little bit of damage. You can see this battery's down about 10% of its strength. Not a lot considering the ammunition consumption, but... A completely ineffectual volley. Have they not surrendered yet? How? They're just going to fight till every one of them is dead? Alright. The enemy wasted their ammo on this militia battalion. Just so... So much so dumb. I guess. Such a waste of life. They really need to nerf artillery, because while yes, canister fire is very effective, it is not this effective, I'm sorry. Also, they shouldn't be like as effective at melee as regular infantry. Especially after firing their, their guns all frickin' day, you know? They should be tired. Meanwhile, our boys are coming in here, full condition. Charge those guns! Fire a volley, quick. Okay, that was an effective... That was an effective bat, uh, engagement there. And now the enemy is routing. The enemy army is fleeing from the battlefield. Get out of here! Run for your lives! I didn't butcher my men too bad, I don't think. Guess we just slaughter these guys. They're like, that's the, you know, it'd be nice if there was a little bit of a delay. It's like limber up and go. Like maybe, maybe there should be a delay in, in your boys getting out of there. I'm also not clear if the pursuit phase in this game really matters. Like, it seems like the casualty count doesn't always include casualties you inflict after it has the enemy army fleeing from the battlefield. But it's still fun to chase them down. They just abandoned their guns. Hey, we captured him. I can kill him too. There's a button on here that lets you kill him. This little X over the human. Oh no, they stood up to my attack. At least some of them did. No cavalry? Nope, not right now. We just unlocked cavalry. But I don't have enough horses to do anything with it. Yeah, butcher them as they run. Like these guys, I guess they don't have any condition to fight, but. 
present. Fire. All right, we'll end the battle. So we captured 30 enemy troops. It did give us credit for that capture of that enemy battery. They lost 18 of their 30 guns, so more than 50% of their artillery destroyed. We lost one gun. We lost about 1,000 men, 937 out of 3,600. They lost about 1,375, so considerably more, 400 more men, plus a higher proportion of their force. They lost over 50% of their force in this battle. Nice little victory there. Uh, capture, I'm assuming where it says captured, it will be the artillery unit. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't say anyone's captured on this screen here. But you can see one enemy company, one artillery battery destroyed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine companies of enemy infantry destroyed. So that should have a considerable effect. The heavy casualties can all be replaced between battles, but having that many companies actually destroyed should have a pretty considerable impact on the ability of the British to reinforce because destroyed units have to be like replaced via reinforcement. And the British don't get a ton of those. So hopefully that will help us out. So we kind of go back to the screen. We'll take a look. Salem should be ours. The enemy will withdraw north. They may even have a few more units surrender. You're more likely to see units surrender on the strategic map after a battle than you are, you know, the tactical battle map. Someone just gave us two grand. Thank you. All right, so they're running out of there pretty damn quick to Portsmouth. Our boys are going to advance towards Salem, try and capture some of these goodies. So, you don't really actually capture that many weapons, unfortunately, but captured some. Trying to clear the, the battlefield of enemy weaponry. 25 muskets there. Whoa, what is this? We've received information that the British are planning an attack on New York this summer. Perhaps it's worth taking the trouble to create a defense. I think we have time to send troops to stop the invasion. It's necessary to allocate funds to organize regiments to protect New York. I do not have $10,000. So, sorry. All right, so Salem is ours. Send these militia in here. Let's also pursue north toward Portsmouth, which is the capital of Massachusetts. See what we can see. Maybe we can quickly follow up our victory there with another one. Meanwhile, the, the Vaughn Brigade, we're going to split that in two. So you guys are going to move in here. And then you guys are going to move back to Boston. I don't want to leave Boston ungarrisoned. They only got 900 men. Whoa, butcher. Don't get, don't get yourself out ahead of your boys too much. So let's go fight another battle. Apparently I outnumbered the enemy too much for this to be a formal battle. It's not giving me the option to fight on the tactical map. So the enemy's morale's probably toast. I'm guessing their equipment also is not in great shape. So this is sort of a follow-up battle, which is maybe even bloodier than the previous fight. But you can see here the enemy is retreating north toward Falmouth. Butcher, don't get yourself killed now. Go and charge the garrison. There's only like 70 men, I think, in the garrison. So when battles are too lopsided like this, I don't. you don't generally get to fight. All right, they surrendered. Nice. So nice little 
series of victories here. What are they sending 93 men south for? Go charge them. Are they going to try and piecemeal retake Portsmouth? I got no ammo, but should be able to melee them, right? Yeah, they surrendered. 80 prisoners. Hell yeah. Permanently destroying British regiments feels nice. All right, my boys need a break. I know the enemy has like 7,000 troops up at Fort George, so it's not just going to be a, a quick and easy like swing back that way to win. Why can you not? There's also some dockyards here, it looks like. Why can these guys not go in the fort? Or not the fort, but the... It doesn't let them go in? Oh, that's weird. All right, we got some more goods from Evans. We've got 86 prisoners at Portsmouth. You can see these ships are attacking my supply ships. Yeah, so a handful of British prisoners to do some construction work for us. Cherokee raids. Okay. All right, so we still got about 2,000 men. Let's go ahead and have my character do a little bit of recon since I got no cavalry to do it. Let's go up here and see what's going on. What do they have at Falmouth? 1,200 men? Okay. Don't get yourself killed now. They shouldn't be able to catch you. 1,200 men. I still got a nice little advantage in terms of manpower against them. What about Fort George? Where are their 7,000 troops or whatever it is? 700 at Fort George. Is it Fort Frank? Or did they pull their troops out and move them somewhere else? It's Fort Frank. 6,000 boys. All right, go back to Lyman. You'll come back and rejoin your boys at Portsmouth soon. But the capture of Portsmouth also gives us the capital of New Hampshire which has impacts in terms of industry and efficiency and things like that. So good news there. Okay, so while we are retreating up here, let's go ahead and take a look at the headquarters and things. Let's go to the headquarters section. We need to do some stuff. Uh, Dragoon Company, we got that. Let's do the Minuteman. Also, my reputation is up to 90 which is nice. Henry Knox. Well, we already got that actually. So we'll go up to six pound field gun and then Navy innovation. Keep working on that. All right. I can't recruit any more generals right now, but I do have Knox available whenever we get to that point. And it'd be nice if there was like a decision, you know, now we can send stuff to New York. Now we have time, but I don't. All right, so if we go to actually here, let's go back. Why does my bounty need to be so high to draw recruits? Like it's got to be one seven to not be just horrible recruiting bonus. We'll spend a little bit more. We can always adjust that down. I think we've got some stuff we can sell if we have to. So we've got... Nine copper, I can turn around and sell that. 1,600. Got a little bit of surplus other things too. Nine textiles, turn around and sell that for 1,000. Three furs, sell those for 1,000 almost. And then we've definitely got a nice little 
chunk of muskets. We got almost a thousand United States muskets, but we need those for replacement recruits. We've got, we captured about 150 British b brown besses, which maybe we'll sell those. Those are pretty valuable. I do have a handful of units that are equipped with them, so we won't do anything right now. Does it depend on the general on how many recruits they draw? Uh, your reputation, I believe, will influence it and other things, how much money you're giving them. The recruit, I don't think the recruits are directly influenced by the general in the city because recruits are drawn whether you have a general there or not. I don't need you to go into the mountains. So with the seizure of Portsmouth, that also means we probably don't need to garrison Fort Stevens, which is nice because we pulled troops out of there previously. I don't even know if I need to garrison Salem, but... You know, we will set, Salem is set as a priority, so that's nice. But yeah, we're trying to eject the British out of, uh, out of North America at this point. They got seven or 6,000 troops at Fort Jor, or sorry, Frank. We could take Falmouth pretty easily, I think. I mean, we outnumber them more than two to one at the moment. Even if they bring their 700 troops at George down, we've still got a nice little advantage. The 500 troops at Lehman can slide in from the mountains and on the flank. And then we've got 1,200 troops up here at Norwick. But the British are getting hemmed in. They don't, they don't have much left. Remember, we already took Canada. We're garrisoning it because Canada is not very loyal. You can see 8% at Quebec, 8% at Troyes. Montreal's a little bit more sympathetic, 28%, 28% for Chambly, 1% for Fort St. John. We can't do anything there. And then loyalty in New York's even still not that great, but, but yeah. Um, do I think, I definitely think the map is a step up. Now, I like the previous game's sort of rigid campaign system, but if you're trying to go more open world, this is definitely a big step up. And it expands, so when the New York campaign begins, which I don't think is in the game yet, but when it does begin, the map will get bigger yet again. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. We've been going for over 40 minutes. We've won a pair of victories here, crushing Gage's army, and we are now preparing to advance on the other generals in the British Army, and maybe perhaps to finish off Gage. We do need some time to replenish our forces before we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the force up at Fort Franks, but we'll see how we want to proceed, I'm not quite sure, in our next episode. Until then, however, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.